everybody and welcome back to Channel 2S. It has been a really long time. I haven't felt like building recently and there just hasn't been a lot of news to talk about either so I really didn't have a reason to make any of these but uh, I'm gonna get back in the swing of things and we're gonna finish building the Avalanche Exia tonight so let's just jump right in. The start of March is about a week away right now which means we're starting to see the box art and official images of many of the March Gunplow releases. So first off we have the biggest release of March, which is the Master Grade Providence Gundam, and we finally have a box shot of this kit. It looks, uh, it looks okay, like it's a Master Grade box. I think the pose could have been a little more interesting. It's kind of just the Gundam standing there. It's not the most interesting pose I've ever seen. It's not particularly impressive, and I mean, it's good artwork, but I think the pose could have been a little bit stronger. But fortunately, the box for the Special Edition Providence Gundam completely makes up for that because apparently they saved their book good box art for this version of the model. It's in a very cool dynamic pose with all its funnels flying around and it's basically showing off everything that makes the Providence Gundam awesome. And speaking of things that make the Providence Gundam awesome, the stand that comes with the special edition, we finally have some colored pictures of it and apparently it's actually not going to be that flat gray we originally saw it in. It's going to be a very nice red with a dark gray stem so that looks very cool it does have a new connector on the top of it that allows it to mount to the providence gundam looking pretty cool and the parade of box art continues with shars zaku one as i've said before this is not the one we got back in november that was the s type this is the regular old zaku uh not bad art not the greatest posing either though like come on he's just standing there and shooting this isn't something i see on a shelf and you know want to buy. This is something I'd pass over for like the Bugu or the gun cannon test type. But fortunately there is more to the kit than just what's on front of the box and the kit itself does actually look quite good so I am still looking forward to this model. Another model I'm looking forward to is the high grade Atlas Gundam and we have box art for this as well. It looks pretty much like all the other Thunderbolt box art. Same artist, same sort of general aesthetic. Pretty cool pose. He's kind of surfing along on his giant boat wings which are the most silly and awesome thing I've seen in Gundam. But anyways, it just looks really cool. We got a nice new shot of it here, sort of kneeling, and that looks great because you can see it's got a lot of knee movement, which is something you kind of take for granted nowadays, but there was actually a time where uh, high grades that could kneel were uh, not a very common occurrence, so it is cool to see that this guy lives up to the modern standards, especially since some of the other some of the other Thunderbolt kits did feel a bit dated in their engineering. Like, they weren't bad, but like the Psycho Zaku, to me, felt not that much different from the uh, MSV Zakus we got in the early 2010s. And there is one final elephant in the room when it comes to news, and that is one very big new reveal from Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. This is the upgraded form of the Vidar. We saw this in silhouette before, and apparently that silhouette had absolutely nothing to do with the actual Vidar upgrade because you put this guy next to the silhouette and uh, they don't look very similar. Yeah, as you can see right here, this is the Gundam Kimaris Vidar. And uh, the Kimaris Vidar is looking... Um, how do I put this politely? It looks fucking hideous. It does. Like, I'm sorry, this just looks awful. This... most of these IBO designs, some of them looked a little weird, some of them looked a little funky, this thing just looks hideous. Like there's so much going on here and there's some things here, just a couple things that I kind of like about it. Like the back. I like the backpack. I like those kind of shield armatures he has. They're very Thunderbolt-esque. Those are probably the best part of the design. They look pretty nice. I also think his lance is not bad. The black and yellow looks kind of ugly, but it's mostly okay. But everything else about this kit the legs look really bad, and the skirt armor and the upper body just don't match them at all. And then the head, it's like somebody just took a bunch of just broken chunks of plot plate and just glued them together. It looks really bad. I know recently there was a sort of quote-unquote leaked image of the upgraded Gundam Vidar that turned out to just be fan art. And in all honesty, I kind of wish that's what we got because... While it didn't quite fit the aesthetic of the rest of the IBO kits, at least it looked better than this. Oh yeah, and if the uh, Kimaris Vidar wasn't already weird enough, he has literal drill bits coming out of his knees. Not like drill weapons, 
but like literally a pair of drill bits that look like they were just glued onto the knees of the kit. I don't think I even need to tell you that I'm going to be passing so hard on this high grade. So now we're going to start the weapons off with the GN Blade Long, and this is a very, very simple assembly. It's just a blue piece and a white piece that come together just like this, and then the GN Sword Short, or GN Blade Short, rather. The Exia's weapons all have very similar names, and they all have GN tacked onto them, and they're all some kind of sword, because Exia was all about the swords. And there we go. Long sword, short sword, we got them both. They both need a hell of paint, and, uh, well, let's just move on to the big sword. So, we got the base part here, and I'm pretty sure I'll need a polycap for here at some point, if I remember correctly. Well, surprisingly enough, there's actually no polycap that goes in there. You just take these pieces, and you just kind of stick them together like this, or is it like this? I'd imagine it's probably like this. Yeah, it is like this, because uh, this part's going to have the blade coming out the front, and this is going to be attached to the arm, just like that. And the handle for the sword is very simply just these two pieces locked together with another cap over the front here just to seal this whole thing off. And then there's this little connectory piece that this kind of locks into just like this. And that can pop onto the sword right there. And I might actually have these backwards. Nope, I got it all together right. So we're just going to take this blue piece, stick it over here. And then grab the blade to the Geon sword and clip it over here. But uh, yeah, this looks like it's ready to pop onto his arm. So coming around to the back of our problematic friend, the Avalanche Exia, uh, we will begin to attach the weapons, or we uh, would if he wasn't causing us big problems. Because this piece here, uh, it's supposed to clip over here. Now obviously, even if this went on, it wouldn't be a very good connection since, you know, this here is really loose and that's really loose and you can just pull this piece right off with like no effort and this I I can't see this really going well even if it would go in but guess what it's not going in because there's a little notch cut here and a little groove here and they're on the wrong side so you can't actually stick the sword in like you're supposed to so plan B is attach the sword to his arm and we can already see there's gonna be a little bit of an issue right here because these new arm parts give him this really weird diagonal connector thing so you have to kind of figure out how to get this over that so once you get that clip hooked into that weird ass little joint there and you got your sword falling apart you're then supposed to kind of weasel this handle down into his hand and then there you go that's that's how he's supposed to hold his sword it doesn't go flat against his arm he just kind of holds it at this really weird clunky angle but at least he should be able to hold the long and short swords on his back right so we just, I guess we just stick these in here. Yeah, it looks like these just go right in here just like this. They got little slots that clip into there. And then this is supposed to go up here, right? Hey, yeah, there we go. Okay, so that looks all right. I just got to grab the beam sabers. And we're very simply just going to attach one up here on the shoulder. And then one down here on the weapons holder and we get this interesting little crisscross of blades up at the top by his shoulders which would be maybe a little more impressive if we could incorporate this one. Hey I spoke too soon because I just figured out how to get the sword to hold in there although it's still really floppy up here and kind of doesn't look that sturdy but you know what at least it's there and at least he now has this really weird funky asymmetrical tail coming out of his backpack of swords. And for one final accessory we got a nice little three-piece stand that clicks together very simply because we are gonna need this thing because the next thing we're gonna build are the legs for the Avalanche Exia Dash. Okay so to start building the Avalanche Dash parts we are going to connect these two pieces together and then these two just like this and then we're going to take this piece, and yes, it does have a very unattractive sticker on it. And we're going to stick this over this. How exactly? Uh, it looks like this. Something like this. And then there's a polycap that's going to go down through here. And this is somehow supposed to hold it together, I guess. Or, well, I guess it won't hold it together right now, but once we have stuff, once, have, once we have stuff around here, it should hold it on quite nicely. In fact, it looks like we're going to make that stuff right now. So we have this piece, and we have this piece, 
and we take a poly cap type A and it just goes into there exactly like that and then this is going to go together just like that and it makes a nice satisfying little clicking noise and then we're going to take this piece nope nope I was wrong this piece we're going to take this piece and we're going to click this into here just like that and the polycap should connect onto the part just like so and there's another polycap that we're going to stick in down here. So this is where we bring in our Avalanche Exia and we're going to take this and we're going to clip it over that little side part just like this wrap this piece around the other side and it'll hold it all together. Well, it is important to keep in mind that if you're building this after you've already built the normal Avalanche Axia like I did, you will want to remove the original kneecaps of the model before you put on the new armor. And to continue the construction of that new armor, we're going to drop this polycap into this piece right here, attach it to this large blue section, attach a polycap here, and a polycap here and this little gray piece right here. Now we're going to attach this large U-shaped piece right here and then seal the whole assembly off with another large blue piece making sure that all the tabs and holes are lined up properly to prevent any mishaps. Then it's just a matter of attaching another white section onto this side and then just taking these two pieces right here clipping them together and attaching them onto this right here. It locks into place and then it swings down and hides away very nicely down underneath here. And then this gray section that we built earlier, if we can get everything to hold together right, should lock in right here. And this looks like it'll be some kind of foot pedal for the Axia to rest its feet on when the skis are deployed. And if I want to display the Avalanche Exia dash with the little claws on the end of the feet, I could do that, but right now I'm going to use the close part instead and slide it over here just like this. And then once again, gray plastic tab goes into the poly cap just like that. And now you can just slide it up and wiggle it in through here and it'll hide away just like that until it is needed at which point you can swing it down just like this tilt his foot a little lock it down over and you have a very nice smooth transition so for one final comparison before I end this video for tonight here is the standard Avalanche Exia leg and here is the Avalanche Exia dash leg so there you go guys the completed high grade Avalanche Exia I will be building the rest of the dash parts tomorrow but for tonight I think that's a pretty good place to stop. So, as always, leave a like if you enjoyed tonight's video. We did have some very cool new things to talk about today with the Gundam Kimaris Vidar, as well as that new batch of box art. So there was some pretty awesome stuff here, as well as, of course, the Avalanche Exia. If you're new to this channel, I do videos like this quite often, and also do Gumpla reviews, as well as other miscellaneous Gumpla-related videos. So if that sounds good to you, and you're not already subscribed, hit the icon you see on the screen right about now and if there's no icon there I do apologize but there if there is an icon you should also be able to see two little icons right here little thumbnails linking to my other videos you can go check them out and as always I'm Second Soundwave and I'll see you next time